everyone, this is Judy with JLB Crafts. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a try. In this video, I'm going to be setting up and hand lettering the week of October 10th through the 16th. We are on capital letter P. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, this one is a no-brainer. I knew this from the moment that I saw that P fell in October, that it was going to be P for pumpkins. Come on, how could we do anything different? So, those are our words. I have pulled, I was lucky enough to snag the Planny Thing Pumpkin Vibes book before it sold out. And there are lots of, of uh, normal colored, normal feeling fall pumpkins, but there are also lots of funky pumpkins that feel like they are definitely Halloween-y. So I'm gonna use these. Um, and then there's an actual Halloween section. I might throw, a purple one or two in there, these pinky purple pumpkins. I used these actually for a pink spread for um, breast cancer awareness, but I might snag a couple of the purpley ones because that's not a normal pumpkin found in nature color. These are all pretty normal. I'm going to stay away from those, but then I've got all these Halloween pumpkins as well. So I'm thinking if I include some purple and some teal, I can do a black, orange, purple, and teal pen. So... Um, I have also pulled then, I wanted to find the, the Halloween um, Simply Gilded Washi that I have is actually, if I put it along the sides like I normally do, the bats are going to be flying sideways. So I pulled these two skinny washies that I got last year from the washi tape shop. And as you can see, they're meant to go vertical. This one, it's really, really hard to see, but it's got witch hats and cauldrons. I pulled it initially because it was orange, but this one has... Lots and lots and lots of pumpkins. So I'm gonna go with this one along the side. Now, I don't have any purple pumpkins, so I need to bring purple in in other ways. I'll bring it in with my pen, and I'll bring it in. I pulled these teeny tiny tiny little sticker guru stickers. No pumpkins there, but definitely Halloween, and they're purple, so I'll use these as my bullet points. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do just like, just like I normally would. I'm gonna go down the sides with my washi tape, not pulling it super tight. Uh, because I don't, what happens is your, your, your washi tape stretches a little bit. It's, it's imperceptible, but it does stretch. And then when you unstick it from your desk, that's what causes your page to curl. So pull it tight enough to get it straight, but don't pull it super tight. And then I'm going to go down the center with, um, my stickers and I'll go ahead and put my bullet points on there as well. So there we go, pages are all set up. Let's grab a, uh, this is a metallic purple pen, a tool pen. So we'll write, use this to write our words in. So of course, capital P on our first day. And then photo, kind of a plannery word. Plum, could be a plannery word if it was a groceryist. Pl grocery list. Plan, of course, is a very plannery word. Page is a planner, plannery word. Prof, just trying to keep to four letters or less around there. And picks, that pictures, picks, that could be a plannery word. So there we go. I am going to pick my pens and zoom in, and I'll be right back. So here are my pens. I have the black Tombow Fudenosuke, and I am going from firmest to softest. Then I have the Vice Brandt in an orange. Then I have the Kaleograph in a purple, 
uh, let's see, Heliotrope is the name of that color. And finally, I have the darker teal um, Pentel brush sign pen to try to pick up the dark spots on these pumpkins. So let's get started. I am doing aces now, still working on my S. So um, I am heavy handed. It's easier for me to control, more natural for me to control the firm pens. That's why I warm up from firmest to softest. If you are light handed, I recommend you all warm up in the opposite direction because you'll naturally be able to control the softer pens better. So this is the Tombow brand. Fudenosuke is the product line. Next, I have the Weiss brand. This is a German pen. Uh, that's the brand, I think, I believe, Ultra Color is the product line. So we have the orange. Next, I have the Heliotrope cover, colored Kaleograph. And we'll do, we'll do one at the end with the fat, with the fat end. I just love the dustiness of that purple. It's not super bright. And last but not least, I have the Pentel Touch brush sign pen. So Pentel is the brand and the brush sign pen is the product line. And this is definitely the softest one I have today. Okay, still waiting on that S breakthrough. <laughs> Let's do a deep dive into the P. So the, there are a surprising lot of ways to do capital P. So we've got our lowercase P here. Um, here it looks like they're doing, they're starting at the top line. They're basically doing a heavy down and then I assume they're starting our, their second stroke at midline and doing this big loop, the light up, around, and heavy down to make the P. So they've got all of their flourish up here in this portion. Okay, let's grab our sheet. And then for the rest of my pages, then I have, I have the free download Tombow. This is to go with the pens that we're using, the Fudenosuke Kalei. Calli calligraphy pens and I have this linked and there's um, again no slant um, as we've seen with their entire basically font there's no slant there's not a lot of curl and flourish so they're basically starting at top going heavy down and then a light up with a little tiny bit of a curl there so they're not technically closing their P and they are putting a little bit of a curl there in the center Next, I have the Rainbow Crayolaligraphy book that I got at Dollar Tree. You can get it there. Um, I think people have seen it at Walmart. I have it linked on Amazon. Um, and so you can tell where they're starting because of the dot and then the arrow showing you the direction. So they're doing, starting at midline, they're doing a light up, heavy down, and then it looks like they're probably picking up their pen and coming to midline doing a light up and a heavy down to attach it. So a uh, little bit of a gap there, a little bit of a gap here as well. So they're, they're coming away from that heavy down stroke way, way early and not really attaching to it at all. This is definitely my preferred style of entrance stroke for the P. So I'll do something along those lines. Then this is the Crayolaligraphy boxed set that I happened to find at Walmart. So another variation, they're starting actually at midline. They're coming pretty much straight diagonal across, looping in the opposite direction counterclockwise, heavy down. They've got a little bit of a bounce letter feel because they're dropping below baseline. And then they're obviously lifting their pen, coming back up to midline and doing their light up heavy down to close distinctive look to that one. And then last but not least, the Calligraphy Made Easy book, which I also purchased at Walmart, but I have linked, uh, I have an Amazon link to it. So here, again, so this is basically the P I did last year. Um, starting a midline, doing a light up and almost dropping under, almost a little bit of an underturn, and then a heavy down, lifting the pen. So there are three, almost three separate strokes here. And you can see their, their gappiness here between the vertical heavy down and the loop is a bit smaller. It's a little bit tighter. But again, they're not quite closing it all the way. And then for alternatives, I love this book because it gives you alternatives on a lot of the letters. And most of the alternatives on the capital letters, I'm like, whoo, 
<laughs> so um, again, here's our alternative. They're starting way down, almost at baseline, doing a big, long, heavy up, doing that same that we just saw in one of the um, Crayola calligraphies where they're doing the counterclockwise come loop around, heavy down. And then another stroke again to do a really tight, uh, pointy, almost oval shape loop on theirs. And again, they're not closing it. So almost pretty much none of these closed their P. All right, so let's give this a try. So I, I pretty much, I like the P I did last year, but I do want to incorporate um, that discovery I had a couple weeks ago with my capital N where I made my entrance stroke curve. So I, this is last year's where I started at midline. I came up, but kind of almost dipped under reverse direction down. And then I started my loop there. Okay. That's basically what I practiced last year. I had a discovery a couple weeks ago with my N where I changed my entrance stroke. So it doesn't duck under and it doesn't have a reverse direction. It just kind of does almost a triangle. So light up, almost di diagonal, no reverse direction, just go smoothly straight into my heavy down. So it almost looks like a J sort of. There. And I, I don't know why. I like the, I feel like it looks a little more polished to smooth change direction rather than have this hard reverse in direction. So that's what I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna keep working on this one. Maybe cut back a little bit on this because it's almost even to that. And I don't know, I start to lose the P and just get this, I don't know what letter there, almost like a tree or something, I don't know. So I'm gonna cut back on this a little bit, but that's basically what I'm gonna go with. You can also play with how far below if any, you drop down midline. You can also play with, do you put a little bit of a tail on here or not? I think I don't like mine especially loopy, so if I do a little bit of a tail there, it's gonna be too much, but we can try it. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. I don't really care for that little tail. And the slant on that one got a little out of control. <laughs> So still trying to figure out how to make it look like a P by making this portion here smaller and this portion here bigger. So I started up a little higher, brought this down a little lower, and that shifted the balance, I think, more in favor of the P. If you find yourself getting a little too slanted, straighten your paper up a little bit more because your natural tendency is to cut, is to pull straight down. So if, if you're too slanted, straighten your paper up a little bit. All right, I like it. Nice color combo. Okay, so we're gonna have a couple words that looks like about three words with an ascender right next to the P. Um, which there is no connector stroke for the P, so that's okay. We'll just have to play a little bit with getting used to how far out to start our, our second letter. So let's try photo. Hi, Calcifer. Is it lunchtime, baby? It is. <laughs> I guess I could stop right now. You got your harness on. It's too cold outside. Go sit next to the window. So I, no matter what I do, I think this is gonna look just a little bit gappy, but definitely start your age closer than you think you need to. Let's try that again.
better. I like that. That that gap, that tiny gap, looks so much better to me. Um, so, like I said, start your age closer than you think you need to. I reverted a little bit to last year's P there. <laughs> So we'll put an L right next to the P. We're actually going to do that on both of these words. I probably could have changed one of these out for a different one, but that's okay. So again, starting my L much closer to my P than I think I need to, just like with the H. So trying, of course, to get the big heavy down on the P and the big heavy down on our H or our L as parallel as possible. comparing this P to this P, where this one I stopped right at midline and this one I dropped down below midline. I think I need to drop down below midline to give me a big enough circle portion to balance with this entrance stroke. For me personally, it's just one of the things I'm noticing. I definitely need to drop just a little bit down below midline on that. Alright, let's try the most plannery word we have this week, plan. A little too slanted again. Hopefully by this point you're getting a good feel for how close you need to start that ascender to the P that you've already written. In case you're wondering where Calcifer went, I could hear Hubby downstairs. Jasper complained loud enough that he broke down and gave them some smooshy food. So we were able to continue uninterrupted. Furthermore, <laughs> all right, let's try Paige. So we are gonna have the G descend down. So we're gonna have to work on our spacing a little bit, but we can do it. I'm gonna try to miss the sticker here. So that's why I'm starting so far over. Okay, so again, starting my A further over to the left than I think I need to. Trying to get 
the big long straight line on the P and the G to be completely parallel. I think that one looks pretty darn good. I would write that at the bottom of a page in my planner. <laughs> All right, for those of you who are still struggling with your R, we've got Prof, O, oh, and the F. So this one might be ugly for some of us, but practice makes perfect, as they say. So let's try this. I think I can squeeze my first P in this space. So since we're not connecting the R to anything, we can start it clear over here under the P. We can just start at the bottom and come straight up, or we can do just a little bit of, a, of an entrance tail, which would slide under the P and help it look just a little more connected. So let's try that first. I got a nice big opening in my F, which is what I discovered I liked. So, so that's not bad. Um, it's, it makes this look a little bit busy though. So let's try it without the entrance stroke. Let's just come straight up from baseline. So that looks good too. Um, they look connected. They look a little more connected there, but again, that looks a little bit busy to me. So just play with it and um, see which one you like. I kind of split the difference there. So I went with a teeny tiny little entrance tail and that's probably what I'm gonna go with. This R was getting a little small and I realized it. Um, I need to bring my little loop up above midline so that my slant is coming out right at midline. Otherwise it looks weirdly small to me. You again? I thought daddy gave you some lunch. What's the matter? Are you bored? It's gray and cold outside and he misses summer. Calcifer is my summer loving kitty. He loves to go outside and sit with his harness on in the backyard. <laughs> He's sitting right there. <laughs> to reach up above my head, his head and grab my camera, <laughs> which has caused calamity before. <laughs> Go look out the window, dude. All right, last but not least, pics, short for pictures. So you might use this. Move your butt. <laughs> Okay, so again with the I, same thing with the R. I'm gonna kind of split the difference <laughs> between a big start and a no start. Oh. 
they're both in here now playing with my desk. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we're going to split the difference uh, for our eye. That's if you want to do an entrance. It just occurred to me as I was writing this that that's not how I do an eye. I just start the eye at midline. So you could do that. Um, I, I will not be doing that though. Well, this is the way, uh, let's do this one the right way. Like this. That's the way I do my eye. Do your eye the way you do yours. Don't be distracted by two cats fighting on your desk and you'll figure it out. <laughs> you too, Jasper? I know Daddy gave you some lunch, I heard him. You always show up at my very last word. Doesn't he always show up during the last word? gonna finish okay and then I'll give you some more lunch all right I don't know what happened to my C <laughs> dyslexia <laughs> I don't know Pisces there you go <laughs> think my microphone is picking it up but the cats are running around behind me I can hear them thundering around like a little herd of mini elephants <laughs> it's distracting I tell you <laughs> all right so first thing I wanted to do though was so we practiced October last year and I said something about definitely putting it in my planner and I did and I wanted to share it with you all so there we go there is October written with a very, very fat metallic marker, Zig Kuratake. So there's one. And then I did again here in a weekly blackout spread. Let's see. This one, there we go. There's the orange version. So I love it. I love the way it turned out. I knew I would. There's our October versus our October. So this is a fat end pen. Uh, similar to the fat end of a calligraph, and you definitely need bigger space to make that look good. So, anyway, here is my finished P practice, and let me sh show it to you last year. So, you're gonna see a definite difference because I completely changed the entrance to my P, and I'm glad I did because I love it. Um, I don't have the hard change in direction anymore. Um, my F is more opened up. My R hasn't changed so much, but here you can see where I did play a little bit with that start of my R. So there we go, a year's difference. I'm liking the new entrance stroke and I'm definitely going to apply that everywhere I can because I, I just, I really like it. It looks a little more polished, a little more refined to my eye. So I hope you like this video. Good luck with your P. Have fun. It's October. Put some pumpkins on there, even if you're not a big Halloween fan. October is a month definitely for pumpkins, pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice. So have fun with it. I hope you like this video. If you do, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Bye.